G'day Virtual Pilots, it's Requiem. Firstly, I just wanted to say thanks to those of you who've joined my new Discord channel and have become involved in my Patreon. And I really appreciate your support very much, and I've really enjoyed getting to meet and fly with a lot more new pilots as a result. Uh, I've included links to both Discord and Patreon in the video description if you're interested, but for now, let's go to the video. Radio navigation is simplified in L2 because you're always going to be tuned to the closest station and your inbound course is being constantly updated. This makes it easy to use the navigation aids and these videos will help you utilize them to the extent that you can. There's some new terms to understand for this video. The first is heading and this is the direction that your nose is pointed. There's course which is the direction you're traveling over the ground and then when there's wind involved heading and course won't be the same. So the angle between heading and course is the wind correction angle. These stations in L2 are non-directional beacons or NDBs and they send out a signal in every direction around it. This is detected by special equipment on board the airplane. This signal is then displayed by your equipment in a way which directs you how to fly relative to the station's position. Mission creators usually place these to be at airfields using the mission editor but they may not always be implemented. So to get a brief understanding of how NDBs work, we're going to go to a top-down view of it. We're going to visualize the signal that it sends out using a black circle. And here you can see the signals being emanated all directions around the NDB. So if we place an airplane in the northeast area away from this NDB, if the airplane has the right equipment installed, it will detect that it's on the outbound radial of 045 away from the NDB. So in order to find the inbound course to get there, you have to add 180 degrees because the plane is on the eastern side and this will give you an inbound course of 225 degrees. And in this scenario, there's no wind, so the heading and course would be the same. This radio compass is installed in the BF-110, E2 and G2 in the gunner's position, Junkers 88 and the Heinkel 111. This shows us three things. The first is the current heading in yellow, which is your magnetic compass. Two is a red triangle, the autopilot's heading. And three, you've got your inbound and outbound courses from the station in purple and blue. If you have this instrument in your airplane, it should always be your primary reference when you're flying towards or away from a station because it'll allow you to correct for wind. And when you can do that, this means you can fly a straight course to the station instead of a curved path. Now we'll look at the basics of the AFN homing indicators. In all two, you've got two homing indicators modeled for the Luftwaffe. These are the AFN-1 and AFN-2. These instruments are for homing, which results in a curved path towards the station because you can't correct for wind. So here, as of April 2020, I provided a list of the German airplanes which have the AFN-1 and 2 installed. The AFN-1 and 2 each have two needles. The horizontal one gives you range information, and it moves up and down. And then there's the vertical needle, which provides your course information, which swings left and right. Now, how high you are determines how far you can pick up the NDB signal, and the AFN 1 and 2 differ in how they display the range based on your height above the ground. So I've included a couple of pictures showing the range scale, and um, there's also some max reception ranges which are based on your height above the ground. Now, if you're in conditions when you can't see the station itself, it's important to know when you've uh, flown over it because this will tell you that you're about to transition from flying inbound towards the station to flying outbound away from the station. So when you do that, this light will illuminate and the needles will fully deflect to one side. So for course information, the vertical needle will represent your airplane. So it's telling you if you're left or right of the inbound course that will take you direct to the station. So if you are to the right of course, then the needle is going to be deflected to the right and you need to start turning left to get yourself pointed towards the station and let you fly that direct course. So remember that because there's wind involved you may not necessarily be flying a straight path you'll be constantly needing to adjust your heading to keep that needle centered on your way to reach the station. So now we'll go in game and have a look at how to use these with some examples. So on the 88 with the AFN1 down in the bottom left and then on the right we have the radio compass. We have to take a quick look at that and then we're going to pause and we're going to go to the map screen. We're going to look at how we get to where that station is going to be from our current position. So looking at the radio compass we can see that we're on a heading of east 
and when you look at the outbound needle, we are outbound from the station on a course of 120, and this will put us in the southeast corner. So if we overlay the outbound course away from the station, we can see there's the 120, and from here we can calculate the reciprocal, so we know what our inbound course is supposed to be to go to the station, and we're on the eastern side, so we'll add 180, this will put us at 300 degrees for our course to go to the station. But bear in mind, this isn't going to correct for wind, and this is just the first approximate heading we're going to turn to, and then we'll determine our wind correction when we reach it. So to prepare for this turn left to 300, we're going to turn the level autopilot off, pressing left shift A, and then we'll make our left bank and start turning towards the heading of 300. Let's make it a nice, easy turn. There's no rush in this. And like I said before, we're going to reevaluate our position once we finish the turn. And uh, we're going to monitor the top half of the directional gyro to know when we're going to finish our turn. So you can see it there. Once we get to around 300, we're going to ease it out of the turn about 20 degrees prior. Start relaxing the bank angle. Trying to arrive in our final heading of 300. And then once we're back to being stable, we can rely on the radio compass because it's not very reliable to use while we're in a turn and we can see our course is actually now going to be 295 so initially we had a course of 300 but now our course is going to be 290 and that's because the wind has pushed us to some degree during the turn and we're going to have a look in the map and illustrate this now so here we expect it to be inbound on a course of 300 but we ended up with an inbound course of around 295 so thinking about where we are on the map, it's actually put us a little bit further north of our original course. And like I mentioned, this is because of the wind aspect. There's been some wind that's pushed us north of our course, and that means that the wind is blowing from the south. And that affected our location when we finished the turn. So now, according to our radio compass, this is giving us a new inbound course of 2905. So right now, we're currently flying a heading which is around 285. We can see that there on the top half of the directional gyro. And what this means for you is because the wind is blowing from the south, we need to turn our airplane more into the south to correct for the wind. So we can see there we have around about a 10 degree wind correction at the moment to give us our course of 295. And this will allow us to fly in a straight line towards the NDB instead of constantly making corrections and flying that curved line, which is what you would end up doing if you're using that AFN uh, 1 or 2 instrument. So as part of the cross check when you're flying here, you're checking the inbound course and making sure it's going to remain stable. Um, because you know that if your inbound course is remaining stable, in this case around 295, we know that our heading is going to be correcting for the wind properly. Now if you're not going to be correcting for the wind at all, you'll end up having to constantly adjust your heading based on where the course needle inbound to the station is pointing. So if you don't have any wind correction, that inbound course is going to keep changing and this means your heading is going to keep changing and especially when you have an instrument that can help you fly in a straight line that's going to be bad technique, which is what we know as homing. But if you only have the AFN 1 or 2, then homing is how you're actually going to get to the station and you don't really have much of an alternative. So just moving forward in time a little bit so we're closer to the station. Um, this NDB actually placed at an airfield, which is where they're commonly going to be. So here, I'll swap to the gunner position, and we can see there, there's the airfield right ahead. And as the range is going to start decreasing between us and the station, the needle is going to get more sensitive. Um, so right now, the inbound course has been adjusted to around 290, so I haven't fully corrected for the wind um, completely right. But um, if you want to make any small adjustments that will keep you on course, you can use left shift, Z or X. This is going to adjust your course very slightly and it will allow you to keep the level autopilot on at the same time. So this is pretty useful. So as we get towards the station, um, a few things are going to happen as we fly directly over it. The inbound course and the outbound course needles on the radio compass are going to actually swap. So your inbound course is going to become your outbound and the outbound is going to become the inbound because you're flying on the opposite side of the station. And also, as we mentioned earlier, as we fly over the station itself, the AFN light is going to come on. 
and this will tell you that you've arrived and you will be starting to fly um, outbound away from the station once the light goes out. And the higher we are, the longer the light is going to stay on. So here at 3000 meters, the light's going to stay on for a few seconds. If you're right down on the deck and you fly over the station, the light's only going to flash very briefly and you may end up missing it. So you also need to pay attention to the needles in the AFN1 if you have that available because it's going to go full deflection left or right after you pass the station. Alright, so then we're almost over the top. We're just going to wait for that light to come on. So we're going to watch the AFN1 here. There's the light. We're going to look for the course change as well. The inbound and outbound swapped. And now we're flying away from the station on an outbound course of 290. And now that we've overflown the station, we're actually going to take an opportunity and we're going to fly an outbound course away from the station and look at how to do that now. So starting out, we know we're flying on a course of 290 and we're directly over the station, so this is about our approximate position. And what we want to do is join a 360 course away from the station, which is another one in black. So in order to get on this course, we're going to have to fly a heading that will help us intercept it properly. So we can just call this something nice and shallow, you know, no more than 30 degrees, and that'll be 030. So we fly a heading of 030, this will allow us to intercept the course, and we'll see that on the radio compass. And then once it starts aligning, we'll fly so we can correct for the wind and maintain that outbound course of 360. Alright, so back in the 88, we're going to now initiate our right turn to fly a heading of 030 and intercept that outbound course of 360. It's good to know how to intercept a desired course like this if you wanted to avoid certain areas, but also if you're flying an outbound course, you can use it to plot how you're going to get to your target as well, instead of just relying on it to get home. So as we're coming around the turn, we're monitoring the top half of the directional gyro, keeping an eye on it, so as it starts approaching 030, we can start easing up the bank angle, and then when we're there, we can do left shift A and turn that level autopilot back on. So now we look at the radio compass and watching our outbound course needle. As it starts swinging towards north, we make that left turn now. And what we're going to do is we're going to fly slightly west of north, so like maybe 350 or 355. And this way we can maintain a wind correction that will allow us to stay on the course of 360. So we keep coming around to the left and we start leveling it off. Bring it level. Turn the level autopilot back on, and now we can see we're flying outbound on an approximate course of 360 away from the station. So now it's just a matter of monitoring that you're still flying that outbound course. You can adjust your um, heading accordingly to account for the wind, that way you're applying the correct wind correction. Eventually you reach a nice sweet spot and um, you'll be able to maintain the outbound course for whatever you want. So that pretty much covers the basics on how to use radio navigation for the radio compass. Um, we're going to jump on the BF-109 now, and it's the K4 model. So it's going to be using an AFN-2, but the principles can be exactly the same, and you can apply them to the AFN-1. Alright, so here we are in the BF-109 K4. This has the AFN-2 installed. See that there? Now, if you note um, where the vertical needle is, it's actually deflected all the way to the right. And remember that the vertical needle represents us in the airplane. So the quickest way to get on course is going to be a left turn back to the middle. So we're going to do that now. So we're going to make our left bank and begin our turn. And as we make this turn, as part of the cross check, we're going to have a quick glance down at the um, vertical needle, just to see when it starts coming in. And we want to try and time our rollout to have the needle be in the center. So here we see the needle is now alive and it's moving in towards the middle. Keep the turn coming. And just as we reach the middle we can roll out and maintain the heading for a little bit and see what it does with that course. So again, remember this is a homing indicator. So as long as you keep that needle in the middle, um, if there's any kind of a wind, you're going to be constantly correcting your heading just little bits at a time. This is going to create a curved flight path towards the station. Alright, so moving forward in time, we're going to have a look at how the needle deflects when you pass the station. Um, now remember, if you're not perfectly on course, the light may not light up. So it's important to pay attention to that vertical needle, because that's going to tell you again when you're passing the station. So as we're getting closer here, 
watch the needle and it's going to start deflecting even though my heading isn't changing. It's moving very quickly and eventually it's full deflection and that tells us we've passed the station and we need to turn back around to fly towards it once again. So that completes the video on um, radio navigation using some of the Luftwaffe equipment of the radio compass and the AFN 1 and 2. Hope you liked it and uh, decided to become a subscriber. And don't forget I've still got that Discord and uh, Patreon if you want to get involved in those. And those are in the description. So uh, thanks again and remember to fly safe and check your six.